everyone, my name is Steve and I've created this tennis channel for you. Who is this channel for? Well, I'm a tennis player. I play in the USTA here in a beach town in California. I was a 4-5 for five years. Surrounding that, I worked my way up to become a 4-5 and for the last three years I have become a 4-0. So my skill level is decent and I'm just a huge tennis fan in general. So this tennis channel is for tennis players, um, young tennis players that are learning how to play the game, uh, that would like to learn how the strokes, how to play, um, where to play, um, where public tennis courts might be. Um, once you get more intermediate, um, then you know you might want to join a tennis club. Um, it's also for older players that have been playing tennis for quite a while, and maybe between the ages of you know 40 and 70. Maybe they played in high school. Maybe they're getting back into it, but tennis players that uh, might have already joined a tennis club or they play at the park with the friends. Um, they play singles, they play doubles. So it's also for, you know, seasoned veterans that have already joined a tennis club, maybe play in the USTA or, or play in leagues over in Europe or whatever part of the country that you're in. Um, it's also for tennis fans, so it's not just for players. This is for fans of the professional athletes that play tennis. It's for fans of different events and tournaments. You know, fans of the major tournaments. You've got the Australian Open, which starts in January. Right now it's November 23rd, 19... Uh, sorry, November 23rd. 2023 and we've got the uh, end of the tennis season we just had the championships uh, for the individual players I think it's called the WTA championships and Djokovic won on the men's side and I didn't even see the women's but uh, Australian Open begins in in January and then the French Open begins in May and then we go another month later than that, uh, towards the end of June into around 4th of July, is Wimbledon. And then, of course, the U.S. Open, which is in the end of summer, which is around uh, Labor Day, um, which is September. So it's also going to be a channel for sports enthusiasts in general. We're going to go over all kinds of different sports that you can play and watch and highlights and you know everything um, in the sports world so it's going to be a tennis channel that is focused on competition and getting enjoyment and exercise out of tennis um, tennis tenacity is what you're going to want to use to become a tennis savage. So let's go through uh, tennis tenacity. You have to have the capacity for your tennis tenacity. You have to have the personality to be able to play on the court with other people, especially when you're playing singles. If you are kind of an odd, crazy, competitive personality, it'll be difficult for you because you'll be the only personality playing against one other personality. And that can be a challenge. You know, if you think about tennis, it's the only one-on-one -on -one sport in the world besides you know, boxing or wrestling. You know, they're mostly team sports. So you've got, in the United States, you've got American football, basketball, baseball, and there's all kinds of other sports, volleyball. Um, golf is an individual sport, but you're not 
you're competing against other individuals, but at the same time, it's just you against the ball. Nobody's throwing the ball at you. But tennis is one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what makes tennis such a wonderful sport, or two-on-two. -two. Um, I played singles when I first started, and I have you know, become a pretty good doubles player and enjoy doubles much more than, than singles and than I ever did. Um, I enjoyed it in the beginning, but uh, I like having four personalities on the court, strategizing with your partner, and going against two other players that are going to have their own strategy. Playing with just the men doubles is amazing, and also mixed doubles is going to be one of the most fun times of the year. Me and my girlfriend, we met on the tennis court, and we are the 8 uh, mixed captains of our USTA Tennis League here by the beach. So using tennis tenacity to become a tennis savage. But what else with tennis tenacity? You have to have the gravity of the situation. You have to have the capacity in your mind to become tennis tenacity. You've got to have the rationality. Some people aren't rational on the court. They call balls that are out when they're in. That's irrational. They have irrational behavior. They want to get in a fight with you because you're beating them or they're upset. They're irrational. Nationality with tennis tenacity. You can be any nationality you would like to play tennis. Tennis is a world sport and that's why it is so wonderful that almost all countries in the world have tennis courts and professional tennis players and you can play tennis anywhere in the world. It's a wonderful sport and I love that it's a world sport. It's an Olympic sport. We have the Davis Cup. It's, I think it's Europe against the United States, but there are tennis in all parts of the world, and that's what makes it such an amazing sport. Um, individuality. You want to have your own individuality to become tennis tenacity. And what does that mean? That means having your own unique style. I mean, you can look at a tennis player and you can say, I want to be like Rafael Nadal. What if you're right-handed? You might want to be like Novak Djokovic or Carlos Alcarez. Any of these young and up-and-coming stars. You've got Ben Shelton. You've got Francis Tiafo. On the women's side, you've got Coco Goff, Gabriela Sabatini, Sabulinka. You've got uh, just some amazing, amazing mentors and wonderful people playing tennis from all over the world. Um, you have to have functionality. How to function as a tennis player. You've got to have the mentality, the mental strength to play tennis. It is a very difficult mental struggle every time you play tennis. There's a ball that you know you could have hit in, that you hit out. Why did you do that? Was it your footwork? Were you stressed about the point before? Were you stressed about your opponent? You know, some of the best advice I ever got from a tennis player that uh, he was a tennis pro at the time at my club. And he told me, he said, I noticed when you're playing so-and-so that you, you act different on the court and you're not yourself. You were kind of losing your mind because I was losing. And he said, you know that you're not playing so-and-so, you're always playing the ball. And that was the best tennis advice I ever got. So anytime you're playing somebody better than you, worse than you, that might be beating you, whatever it is, if you're just playing the ball and you're just playing tennis, it's just like you're hitting it against the wall. So whatever shot they're hitting, it's your job to just hit your shots and not worry about who it is or why the score is what it is, or what happened on the last point, or what's going to happen on the next point. You're in the moment, you're using your balance, you're using your, your eyes to watch the ball. I mean, isn't that the main thing in every sport? I mean, almost every sport that uses a ball. What's, 
what's the main object of playing sports? Not to win. It's eyes on the ball. You think a baseball player could hit a baseball blindfolded? It's impossible. It's almost impossible to hit a 90 mile per hour, let alone a 100 mile per hour fastball with your eyes open. Baseball players are the most skilled athletes in all of sports. The hand-eye coordination to actually hit a baseball is the most difficult thing in sports. Try it. Go to a pitching machine and try to uh, try to hit a try to hit a baseball. Um, it is. Uh, it's you put it at 70 miles, 80 miles per hour, and it's it's extremely difficult. So where am I going with this? Let's go back to tenacity and casualty. You don't want to be a casualty on the court. We're going to talk about injuries. Sometimes playing too hard, too fast, not having enough strength in the areas that you need to have strength can get you injured. Um, insanity. There's some insane people on the court. And you can't have tenacity if you've got insanity. Some people are crazy. And for some reason, tennis players, we're all crazy. I don't know why. But I've seen the nicest, most chill personalities off the court turn into complete insane maniacs on the court. Where does that come from? That's internal. Something about losing. Something about what's going on in your daily life. You know, that's the best thing about tennis is, you know, tennis, for us tennis players that know tennis and why it's such a wonderful game, it's our sanctuary. It is the place that hopefully we're not thinking about anything else. We're not thinking about work. We're not thinking about money. We're not thinking about our children. We're not thinking about our jobs. We're just thinking about hopefully the next point. It's a place where you can always be present. You can always just go to the next point. And you're not worried about what happened at work on Wednesday. Because it's now Wednesday night and you're playing tennis with your friends and your opponents who are your friends most of the time. I mean, most of the time when you're in your leagues, I know all the people that in all the other cities now. And they've become friends, even though they're our opponents. And let's keep going with this. Brutality. Eh, not much brutal about tennis. Except if you lose 6-0 and you get bageled. That's pretty brutal. That's brutality. Um, let's see. Tactily. Sentimentally. None of those rhyme with tenacity. Um... Specialty, you might have a specialty shot, a drop shot, your overhead, a crazy serve. My buddy's got this one serve, he throws it up and he spins it and it does this high looping thing and when it bounces it goes about five feet the other direction. And it's the most awkward looking, horrible looking serve and it's effective. Sometimes it gets crushed, but most of the time when people see it the first, second, even third time, they can't even imagine how much it bounces and goes five feet the other direction. Um, eventual, eventuality. Eventually, you're going to lose. You've got to be okay with that. You've got to have the eventuality that you're going to lose. And eventually, you're going to win again. And you have to have that tenacity to continue on. Um, seasonality. Tennis is seasonal in some places. So you got to get it in when you can. Some places are too hot. You don't want to play and get heat exhaustion. Humid. Not good. You know, I live in a climate where it's, it's dry. We live by the ocean. But it's wonderful tennis weather. Like I said, November 23rd. It's an absolutely gorgeous day today. Gorgeous. Probably... 67 degrees. I'm even going to take the dog down to the beach on a walk in a little bit. Technicality. Eventually you're going to want to know the rules. What you can and can't do. 
what your opponent can and can't do. Was it a hindrance? What's a hindrance? A hindrance is when you're getting ready to hit your shot and somebody yells something. That's a hindrance. Going over the net, technically you can't do that. You have to hit the ball before and you can't touch the net after you hit it. And we'll go over the rules. That's about it for tenacity. So you're going to use tennis tenacity to become a tennis savage. Don't be average. Be a tennis savage. Because it'll give you the advantage. And in tennis, if you don't know scoring, you get to a place where there's an advantage to one player or one team. And if you get that next point, you win the game. We'll go over the scoring. It starts at love. And that's why we love tennis. You have deuce. The first point you get is actually 15. The second point is 30. From 30, you go to 40. If both players have 40, it's deuce. And then from deuce, whoever wins the next point has the advantage. The savage advantage. Tennis savage. Advantage. Then, as a tennis savage, you want to do damage. Yes. I'm going to cause damage to your opponent. Oh, not really damage, but you want to damage your racket. You don't want to break your racket like some of the tennis players and smash them. Tennis, rats, tennis rackets are expensive. We're going to give you the best equipment to use, best equipment to buy on, on everything for your feet, for your hands, your clothes, the stuff that you are under, the sleeves when you have an injury. We're going to go over all the injuries. Oh, let's see. Being a tennis savage, you don't have any baggage. Yes, you can salvage. Just don't be average. Be a tennis savage. And eventually, you will ravage your opponent. All right. Let's see here. Let's continue on. So this channel is also for people that are, are sports players, that play all kinds of sports. We're not just going to focus only on tennis. Mostly, it's going to be about tennis because we love tennis. But if you're a sports fan, you're going to get all kinds of information from this channel about other sports and maybe bringing things from other sports into tennis. You know what makes Steph Curry so amazing? How can he put on this helmet and goggles where his trainer is making his goggles do all these crazy flashes right before he shoots and he'll still make a three-pointer? How does Clay Thompson make threes in the dark? They shut off the lights in the gym where it was pitch black. And he made like seven in a row without being able to see muscle memory. So we'll learn things like muscle memory, focus, balance, all of that stuff. Competition. All sports enthusiasts love competition, even if you're not a sports enthusiast. You love competition. It could be at chess or Jenga, Foursquare. Nobody really likes to lose, but you, you have to know how to compete, and you have to know how to lose graciously. And some people are ultra competitive. Like, what about Djokovic? He's so competitive that he does smash rackets and lash out at the crowd and the umpire and himself and because his competitive drive is I don't know what makes him so special and right now as of November 23rd 2023 with him just winning the you know the national WTA championship he's the best player in the world still and he might go down as the best ever that hurts me because I'm an Nadal guy. I like Federer too. I like the Djokovic. I like all three of the big three. And I like all the young players coming up. I love watching Carlos Alcaraz. He's so amazing. And I love watching 
Coco Goff. Radu Canoe. I love watching Pliskova. Svitolina. I love watching um, Halep. I love watching Sweetek. I love watching them play doubles. When, um, what's her name? Pagula. And who does she play with? I think she plays with Goff. That's fun to watch. Watching singles players play doubles. And we'll get into all the tournaments. We'll get into, you know, going to the Australian Open and going to the French Open and going to Wimbledon and going to the U.S. Open, which, you know, I haven't been to any of those four. I've been to Indian Wells. Going again this year. Um, it'll be the third year in a row my girlfriend and I have gone, and I can't wait. Get to see both the men and the women. It's going to be awesome. Two years ago, it was my girlfriend's first time going to Indian Wells, and she hadn't seen much live tennis. She's only been playing for, I don't know, five or so years. I've been playing for about 15, and she's a singles player. I'm a doubles player. You know, we can both play both. We play singles against each other, play doubles with each other, against each other. It's, it's a blast. But Indian Wells, we'll take you down there on our trip. We'll show you where to stay, how to get down there. All, everything about the tournament, all the players. But her first match ever that she got to see. We happened to luck out. We got tickets into Stadium, I think, one or two or whatever it was. And we saw Nadal against Kyrgios. And it was a very famous tennis match. And it was a three-set, almost three-hour match for our first match. And she was hooked. Kyrgios was as crazy as ever and as good as ever. The guy's awesome. Nadal was at the top of his game. He was getting the crowd into it. Kyrgios was upset about that. They're rivals. Maybe they don't like each other. Maybe they do. I think they do now. But uh, there was a little time there when Kyrgios was envious of Nadal and couldn't stand him. Went at him at the net, smashed it at him, and just kind of disrespected Nadal. But this match went on three hours. Ben Stiller was in the crowd. Kyrgios yelled at him. He said, why, have you, why am I even talking to you? Do you even play tennis? And he was getting, giving it to the crowd. And every time when Nadal would give one of his left-handed, the crowd would go crazy. And Curious would tell the crowd what he thought of him. It was awesome. The next match that we saw, we saw, let's see, Taylor Fritz play Rublev. Um, we saw bunch of amazing women's matches. We saw Sakari the next year. We saw Pagula. We saw Denis uh, Shapovalov. I, I would call him Shapovalov. Uh, the Canadian. We saw Tiafo. We saw um, uh, not Sinner. We saw Jack Sock and um, the tall guy. Why I'm blanking on his name. 6'8. Uh, super nice guy. Had that long match with Mahout. Um, boy, whatever. Um, greatest doubles match that, that I'd seen. That went three sets. Um, our second match, our third match that we saw in that first year was Nadal against Alcarez. And once again, what an amazing match! I think Alcarez was 18, and he was on fire. Nadal was the most animated I have ever seen him. He was so angry that he wanted to beat his fellow countryman, a fellow Spaniard, the up-and-comer, the super talented, going against the older, still amazing, veteran of 20 major titles. And they're battling it out. And Nadal held off and beat him. And we watched that match. So going to tennis events is something that you, you should do.
It is so much fun. Okay, where are we at? So, competition in any sport. Tennis is the best because it's one-on-one, -on -one, like I mentioned. You know, how to compete. How you compete is important. It doesn't matter just winning and losing. Yes, you all want to win. Some people win more than others. Some people lose more than others. But how you compete, your competitiveness is important. How you compete is the most important. Competitiveness is kind of one-sided. It means you're either competitive or not. There's a scale. And if you're overly competitive, you're kind of a jerk. And if you're under competitive, then you don't really care, which is fine too, because tennis is supposed to be fun. And that should be the main thing. That's why we play sports is for fitness, fun, camaraderie with our peers, exercise, health reasons. And yes, you get a thrill from winning. Some people get more of a thrill. It shouldn't be the main focus. So sportsmanship. Sportsmanship is so important. Sportsmanship is the most important. It's, sorry, just let me get, there it is. Sportsmanship is the most important because you want to be a good sport. You'll be respected. People will want to play with you more. If you're a good sport, if you treat them well, if you make good line calls in whatever sport you're playing. We'll talk about fitness. How, what kind of fitness level you need. You see all kinds of different fitness levels out there on the tennis court. You see people that you think that you could beat easily that are older, heavier, slower, but they're still really good and they work on their fitness. And that's a, that's a good way to get in shape is to play sports. And we'll, we'll talk about different fitness programs and tips and strengthening exercises to you know, keep you playing as long as you can. And as you get older, you know, some of the tennis players, as they get older, they, they only play tennis. They don't go in the gym. I work out three days a week. I have to. I enjoy it. Even if you don't enjoy it, it's important to build the strength around your muscles, especially the ones that can get injured, to keep yourself strong and fit and able to play sports. We're going to teach you stretches, you know, different stretching that, uh, that, you will, that you'll use to prepare yourself for playing. So instead of just getting to the court, maybe you're late, maybe you're five minutes late, everybody's warming up. You still want to stretch for a few minutes. You know, you want to stretch your calves and your Achilles and your hamstrings and your quads and your back and, and your shoulders and your arms. And you can do that really quickly. But stretching is important. And there's all kinds of different stretches. I am not very limber. I'm, I need to learn how to do yoga and different planks and stretches and and, and things like that. I'm not even the greatest at it. I do do uh, weights and I do some stretches just to, you know, keep my muscles, you know, ready to perform. Um, so different exercises. So we'll teach you different exercises and with different exercise programs that are designed to keep you playing on the tennis court and get your body to where you know that it can get. Um, endurance is a big one. So that could be running. That could be you know, using the elliptical machines. That could be using the stationary bike. It could be, could be biking. It could be mountain biking. It could be the rowing machine. Get your arms going. I don't even use that one, but I probably should just for variation. You wanna, you wanna use a lot of variation. You don't want to just do tennis exercises. You want to do all kinds of exercises. Um, endurance is a big one because when you're playing singles, and if you haven't played in a while, uh, your opponent may have more endurance to you, than you, and you might just lose even though you're the better player and have more skill. Their endurance can beat you. You know, I've been playing 
tennis now, I think 15 years, I said. And my endurance has always been super strong. And my partner, my girlfriend that I play with now, she's extremely fit and very fast. And my partner that I still play with today in mixed, we've been playing for a decade or so. And we, we've won matches and we win more than we lose. And of course we've lost. We just went to a sectionals down um, in, in wherever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we ended up losing our second match, 6-1, six, 6-1, one, six, one, to players that were not as good as us, but had a better strategy and more endurance. We, we were not as hydrated. We were, had heat exhaustion. And those aren't just excuses. They beat us. They beat us. They, their strategy was, let's just get it back. And we would hit a great shot and then miss a shot. And they were putting the ball in the right spot and they ended up beating us, a veteran team. We'd been playing together for years. I think this guy was from, I'm not sure um, what country, but he wasn't even, couldn't even speak English. I don't think him and his partner had ever even played together, maybe one other time. And were not as skilled. They, I mean, they were, don't get me wrong, they were good. And they weren't as skilled as us, but their strategy, which was let's just get more balls back. We're not going to try to hit winners. Um, it was kind of a slower pace lob, you know, a game that if they're lobbing it over your head, and you know, it's a good strategy. And they were just hitting the ball in the right spots, and we got frustrated and we got crushed. So that was humbling, and I didn't handle it well. So that was bad sportsmanship on my part. I mean, I wasn't mean. I was just angry and irritated. But uh, still had a blast. Um, so that's endurance. Nutrition is a big one. Like we talked about, you know, eating right, getting enough sleep, you know, before playing a match, you know, you've got to, you've got to get your eight hours. Um, when I first started playing USTA competitively, I'd be nervous the night before, nervous during my match, and I wouldn't sleep as well the night before, and that was not uh, something that that you know helped me on the court. It was it was a deterrent. It was a detriment to my game, and I learned over the years. Now I'm not nervous at all. Um, barely get nervous at all. I I just enjoy playing, and I've had so many little injuries I haven't had any major injuries well I mean a couple that were you know somewhat serious but anyway um, and I just enjoy being out there more because I can't play hours upon hours like I used to boots hey stop sorry about that so playing boots stop um, where was it? Nutrition. So drinking enough water. Drinking enough water and being hydrated the night before, into the next day, having ice, having, you know, electrolyte type drinks. Um, anything that's going to help you hydrate, stay hydrated is important. Your diet is important. You know, as you get older and you're dealing with different things, Alcohol, sugars, red meats, uh, white rice, white bread, um, you know, those things don't help you. They, they can hurt you on the court. Um, they can cause inflammation, which is a tennis player's worst nightmare inflammation. Um, you know, in playing tennis and sports for enjoyment, we've talked about that. That's important. And as you do get older, you you don't take it as serious you know don't get me wrong tennis players they're, they're crazy we're crazy and you don't want to lose to your buddy even though you've known him for 15 years and i've made some of my best friends out on the tennis court that's where i met my girlfriend was at a, a party for one of her friends that was also one of my friends we didn't even know each other we met at the party and we just hit it off um and now we're tennis partners and partners in life and it's amazing um 
so that's the enjoyment of tennis and it took us a while to get our chemistry on the court she's super competitive she, her family is super competitive i'm competitive my family my daughters are are not competitive they are just in, enjoy they both play tennis my daughter played in high school my other daughter you know they both had tennis lessons from the, the tennis pro at my club and they like tennis um, i just played with my daughter a couple months ago she hadn't played in years and we went out and hit and I'd love to get her back into tennis. My other daughter brought her tennis racket down to college um, and she plays down there every once in a while and uh, it's a great thing for the whole family but that's the enjoyment out of tennis is not taking it too seriously. You know there's still guys out there and, that you don't want to lose to and you have to remember that you're playing a game, you're playing a sport and you just want to have fun. Sometimes you just have to have fun. The score doesn't matter, even though it does. <laughs> um, and the happiness. Uh, happiness on the tennis court is an also important. So I teach you how to be happy on the tennis court. That's where all your problems should be gone. Like I said, tennis, for some of us tennis players, is our sanctuary. When my dad died, I went and played tennis. I played tennis almost every day for a week, and it helped me. It helped me just enjoy life and you know just being out with your friends in the sunshine at night under the lights um, it's a place where you can be present and like I said you're playing the next point it's so important to just move on to the next point and whatever happened in the day in the past the previous point it doesn't matter because you're in the you're in the present I mean what do they say that you spend 93% of your life in the present in the uh, sorry in the past or in the future and only 7% in the present so tennis is extremely good at keeping you in the present because if you're thinking about you know something that went wrong during the day or in your life or you lost your job or I mean that's a big one you know or somebody has passed away or you know big things you know tennis can certainly ground you for that but smaller things you know at work you got reprimanded or you did something wrong or you lost some money or your daughter is going through an issue or family member has some some troubling aspect of their life that's affecting you and you know you can't always be in you know that mode and so when you're on the tennis court you can just be playing tennis and you should just be playing tennis or you shouldn't be thinking about family and and issues and your job and you know what's happening with this person and relationships and whatever you know tennis can really help you stay present and that's that's important okay let's go over some of the injuries I've had you know we're gonna I'm gonna go through injuries I know it's not the most exciting topic but it's it's important to be able to get back onto the court for your peace of mind once you start playing tennis it's very addicting like like surfing and like I said I'm gonna go take the dog on a walk here in a second and uh, I'll show you how close I live to the beach. I should be a surfer, but I'm not. I don't like the water. I don't like the ocean. I think it's beautiful. I, li I literally live 100 steps from the beach. And I'll, I'll show you where I live. It's a neat, neat spot. I'm very lucky to live where I live. Um, but you can find tennis courts anywhere. Uh, the ocean, you can't find everywhere, but you know, it's three quarters of the world, so um, this is a real big surf spot in this town, and I live about 100 steps from it. So I'm gonna take the dog on a walk uh, down to the beach, and we're going to teach you tennis tenacity and how to be a tennis savage. And it's November 23rd, 2023, and um, it's a cool, little area that uh, you know the dog obviously you can see 
He's been barking back there at the neighbor's dog. But uh, he needs a walk, so we're going to go down to the beach. And I'll, I'll show you uh, some cool spots. But uh, yeah, I can't do the ocean. I don't like fish. I don't like uh, salty water. I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like the way it smells. I don't really like sand. I don't like, I don't even go, I don't go in the ocean. I just don't do it. There's just, it's, that's, that's their world. Underneath the ocean is a mystery that is, for me, going to be unsolved. I don't care. I, I don't even like the aquarium. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to see a new species of fish. I don't care. I think they're creepy, and I think that that's their world, and I, I don't think we belong in the ocean. I guess surfing's fine. Um, I mean, it looks kind of cool, kind of like snowboarding. You know, I'm a skier. Snowboarding I tried once, and I'll, I'll never try it again. I, um, I did it once, uh, and it was like a, one of those spring days up in Lake Tahoe at at North Star, and I got on my snowboard, and I'm not really a skateboarder or a surfer, so already I'm, I'm behind. I mean, skiing is just, you know, slalom down the, down the, uh, down the slope. Um, I'm a really good skier. Um, snowboarding, not so much. So I was teaching my daughter how to ski, but I'm on a snowboard, and we're going up the bunny hill. And I kept falling, and then all of a sudden you fall, and then your back feet are now your front feet, and you're going the other direction, and then you're back this way, and back and forth, and I didn't get it. I could get up, but I just, it looks so cool, you know, just like surfing. It's just, you know, you're gliding on the water. Uh, not for me. And snowboarding, same thing. Snowboarders are just so cool. They're just carving it up coolly and uh, I couldn't do it I couldn't get up I'm not very limber that's where I need yoga um, I do do stretches but yoga will help you become more limber and I was just sweating and I you have to like take off one boot and, and push like a skateboard and I'm falling all over through the ski line and trying to get onto the bunny slope where normally I'm on black diamonds like carving it up on the skis and I did this till lunch and then I swore a couple times and my daughter looked at me and it was like one of those 55 degree spring days where it's hot and you got a jacket on and you got a turtleneck and you got a uh, undershirt and a long sleeve and gloves and goggles and hats and you can't see anything and and I'm pedaling to the ski slope, and she looks at me, and I'm just panting and sweating. And I get on the lift, and she's like, are you, are you, Dad, are you all right? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm not. This is stupid. And I got down that hill, and I uh, didn't handle that very well. She's like, oh, my God, Dad, calm down. And so I went down, and I took the gondola down. I wasn't even going to use my... Uh, snowboard to go down the, the hill to get down to the, where the lodge lodging is. And I got down and I turned in the snowboard and got my skis and went back out. So, sorry, long story. But anyway, uh, I'm not a surfer, even though I live by the beach. I'm a land sport guy and I, I was a baseball player in high school, but now it's tennis. Okay, um, moving on. Injuries. We talked about injuries. Oh, man. Now, how to manage injuries. Now, I've had all kinds of injuries um, playing sports. Um, first is if it's like a pop or a serious injury, you got to stop. So you got to know when to stop. you gotta know, um, got to know when to stop. Uh, that's, a, that's an important one. If it's something that's gradually come on, it's not really a pain tolerance thing. If it's gradually coming on, that means it's going to get worse if you keep playing. And you have to stop. And you have to get it, get it diagnosed. You have to properly get it diagnosed. So, sure, you can go on the internet, Google it, and 
put in your symptoms and try to figure out what it is. Um, you know, some of the common injuries, um, you know, that I've had. I've had tennis elbow, you know, which hurts right here. And you got, you know, the ligament um, that becomes inflamed. Um, you got tennis golfer's elbow, which is on the inside part of the elbow, but you can get that from tennis from, you know, your forehand. Um, you know, your serve can obviously cause shoulder problems and there's all kinds of different shoulder problems the shoulder is you know not designed to go like this you know pitchers that's not the way the arm's designed to go it's supposed to come underhand you know like a softball pitcher that's the way the arm's designed to go it doesn't really want to come over the top uh so serving can cause can cause issues you know you've got uh you've got um rotator cuff issues that can pop up the bicep tendon is a common one that you know it goes all the way up into your shoulder and sometimes you'll feel a pain in the front of the shoulder um you know you got ligament damage from going over the top you know what for a pitcher always gets the tommy john ligament surgery which is uh, kind of a brutal one now, that can happen to tennis players um also in the shoulder you know there's, you know, just all kinds of things that can go wrong with the shoulder. Um, we're getting diagnosed. So what's the, what do you want to do? You want to, um, you know, rest it. Resting and reassess. So the first thing you want to do is, is rest. And you want to use the rice, uh, the rice theory, which is rest ice right rest ice compression why can't i why can't i do that there we go rest ice compression and number four elevation so rest ice compression elevation is the rice diet um you can self-diagnose and then Probably going to want to see a doctor if it's something persistent. Uh, a lot of us tennis players don't know exactly what's wrong. Like, man, my elbow hurts, or knee, or shoulder, or Achilles, or, um, you know, what? that's a really bad one. Um, your calves, um, hamstrings, you know, you can actually hurt your neck, uh, get a pinched nerve. Pinch nerve actually helped me play tennis once. I was hitting the ball really good, but my neck was killing me. And it's because I wasn't going like this, you know? I was watching through the ball and my neck was not turning. And I was I was playing so well, even though I was in so much pain. And I, because I couldn't move my neck, I couldn't do the, you know, that's what you do, or you look at where the ball is gonna go. You know, you looking at the ball, looking at the ball, hit, look at uh, where it's gonna go, no. Watch the ball all the way through. Use your eyes to just focus on the ball. And that's how you get your balance. And that's a really important one. Um, so if you go to the doctor, then there's, you know, physical therapy. where we'll, we'll go through some physical therapy stuff. Um, the exercises, they give the treatments for all of these injuries. You know, we'll, we'll review, you know, not just, you know, tennis equipment, um, you know, rackets and balls and dampeners and grips and um, you know, everything we need to play tennis, you know, apparel, uh, shorts, um, you know, what, what to wear, um, you know, we'll go over, you know, injury stuff, different braces and sleeves to buy and ointments and slings and all the equipment needed to get through an injury that can still keep you out there and but you got to know when to stop you got to know now when i get hurt it's usually for me i'm going to take a week off i mean nobody wants to take a week off but it's keep me on the court longer um you know i've got knee arthritis pretty bad and i got a cortisone shot and that 
that's that's worked for me. I've gotten two, and I usually get it, you know, right about now as we start the new year because the men's season starts and the mixed season starts, and and then it just goes on through the summer. So if I get it, you know, in December, then I'm pretty much pain free, you know, through the spring. Uh, I'm going to try a new thing called a rooster comb injection. That's a hydraulic acid fluid from a rooster that I'm going to shoot right into my knee. And it's supposed to like lubricate your knee. And I don't really have any, you know, meniscus issues or cartilage issues, but I do have arthritis in my knee and rooster comb injections, a new thing. So I'm going to try that instead of a, a uh, cortisone shot. And I'll give you the update on that. That could be something to to look into if you've got uh, knee issues. You know, at first I got an x-ray to see how bad the arthritis was. Um, and then uh, the, you know, the, the uh, podiatrist um, told me that um, he saw, you know, pretty good arthritis uh, from the x-ray and you know, suggested the cortisone shot, did it right there. He's like, hey, you want a cortisone shot? Well, I don't know. He's like, well, let's just try it out. And I'm like, all right, sure. Great. Worked for four months. I was on top of the world. And, you know, my arthritis is mild, so, um, but it got pretty bad. Um, even though it was mild when it first came on, I was like, oh, man, I can't walk, couldn't go upstairs, down the stairs. But now I do all kinds of strengthening exercises because I used to pull my calves a lot, and then I had a bump on my Achilles, and nobody wants a ruptured Achilles. I mean, they were out for a year. You know, they pull a Kevin Durant or a Clay Thompson, and or you know, a professional football player get his Achilles injury. That's a career ruiner. It's like guy from the Chargers, the cornerback, the Niners signed like four or five times. He's ruptured his Achilles like two or three times, and ACLs and poor guy, he's an amazing player, I can't even think of his name right now, but uh, injuries have just decimated his his career. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so you know, sprained ankles, pulled muscles, ligaments, I'll go over all these things. Um, we'll have experts do it, I'm, you know, and you know, the injuries I've had and, and the physical therapy that I've gone through and others, you know, will We'll get that so we can get you out on the court, you know, as fast as possible. Um, cartilage issues, arthritis, you know, joints, scar tissue. You know, but you can even go as far as I, you know, I've got guys that are out here in their 70s still playing that have knee replacements on both knees, hip replacements on both hips. Uh, technology's come, science has come a long way in the medical field. And even with AI, it's going to advance even way better than where it is now and some of these replacements you know a knee replacement you know my my podiatrist told me that uh you know he eventually is going to re recommend a knee replacement and i'm hoping when that's the time uh you know they probably last you know 20 years so maybe in like 15 years or so we'll get a knee replacement and it could be whoops where'd you go there we are you know, I, uh, with AI and everything, I think a knee replacement in 15 years is going to be, like, done. That's, like, beautiful. It's going to be something that uh, uh, will be amazing. So, um, I know that's, that's the main injuries. You know, there's wrist injuries. I've got a, a tibular cartilage syndrome I don't even know what it's called you know where it hurts my wrist and my sister's husband's a family practitioner so he's like, I think you got TCC and I'm like what, the, what is that so I looked it up and oh well, yeah that's that's what it feels like so I had to rest for that um, tennis elbow is a long one you know ligament injuries um, ACLs MCLs um, you know, your calves is a big one I was pulling my calves a lot it's because you know, the way I, I pop up, you know, people are like, why are you popping up when you hit? You know, you got to use your hips through the, through, the, through the shot. And I pull my calves because I pop up. Um, you know, so how, how do you treat these things? We'll go through that on this channel. 
how do you strengthen around uh, I mean, around the injuries? Like I said, for my knee, I built my calves up. My calves are strong now. You know, I do stretches for my hamstrings. Um, I do, you know, the leg lifts for for your thighs, for the quads. You know, I do the hamstring machines. So I build all these things around, and it's dramatically helped my arthritis. And is it fun? No, but if you do these things, you won't have these little injuries. I got plantar fasciitis. That one was the worst. And I got it right before we went to sectionals the first time that me and my girlfriend captain the 8-0 mix team. And I hadn't played in three months. And I'm, you know, I'm an upper level 4-0. And, you know, she came up from a 3-5 to 4-0. And now she's, I mean, I think she's already, she's going to be a 4-5 soon. Um, I want to keep her down keep her down to 4-0 so we can keep playing together. I mean, I can become 4-5 or five again. I just can't play as often, and I'll get hurt. Um, I do have 4-5 or five level skills, and maybe we'll play 9-0 someday. We'll see. I don't even know if I, if I want to become a 4. I don't know if I want to. I can't play four days a week. I don't want to play four days a week. Um, some people want to play every day. That's awesome. Eventually, we'll get hurt. If you're young, play every day. Tennis is amazing. But, you know, every day is a little excessive. You do anything in excess, and you're bound to get hurt. Um, so how do, you, how do you treat all these different injuries? We'll, we'll go through all that. How do you strengthen around the injuries? Preventative care. You know, we'll do preventative care. Um, you, you know, physical therapy is, is great. You know, you just have to learn how to do these things correctly. So maybe we'll bring a physical therapist on this channel and... and you can tell me your injury and we'll make a video about it. It'd be great. Um, you know, and using the gym, how to use the gym properly, how to isolate your muscles, you know? You don't want to do, you know, bicep curls like this. That's not going to do anything. You're going to throw your back out. So you want to isolate the muscles, right? You're just doing this. You do them the correct way, you know, same with, with uh, triceps. You know, if you're if you're doing this, you know, that's not doing anything. You're not axe throwing. You're not axe throwing. You're trying to just isolate your triceps. So right there, I can feel it, you know. This is a great one for serving. You do this one, you strengthen the tricep like that. And then when you're serving, you know, when you're serving, you're just, you're using that muscle right there. I mean, you can, you can, you can hurt your elbow and but if you strengthen your triceps and your biceps look at that I'm sorry the gym is that way I'm just kidding um, but you know all the things we can do to build muscle um, using the gym the right way you know doing tennis type strengthening in the gym you know other people are gonna like this channel are sports fans in general you know you know what what you love what do you love about sports you know sports are great you know what athletes do you admire I mean we're we're gonna get into the what makes these athletes so special like you know I already talked about Steph Curry and you know you have all of these top athletes but you know Novak to Djokovic why is he so good is he that much more talented than everyone else probably not I mean he doesn't have the biggest serve or the best serve and you know, he's not the most amazing baller. He's a, probably the best service returner. I mean, Agassi was known for a huge service return and was one of the best at it back in the day, and that's how he beat Sampras a couple of times. But Sampras still got the better of him for the most part. I mean, what did Sampras win? 13, 16? I don't know how many. Um, Agassi won eight Grand Slams. I mean, Djokovic is, what, 22, 23? And Nadal, where's he at? 20, 22? Federer's at 20? You know, I mean, what about those three guys that sets them apart from everyone else? Let's, we'll dive into that and what we can learn from them to make us better athletes. Um, you know, what tennis players do you like? What up-and-coming tennis players do you like? Are you a Coco Goff fan? Are you a Francis Tiafo fan? 
I mean, I am. I love watching those two. It, I, so I haven't seen Coco Goff live yet, and I'm hoping to at, uh, at Indian Wells here in March. Um, but I have seen Tiafo, and they're all bigger than you think they are. You know, Tiafo is, he's, you know, he's big. He's a big dude. He doesn't look big. He looks like a little guy. Same with Alcaraz. I mean, I think they're both six feet, but Alcaraz's legs are just massive. And he plays so hard, and I'm afraid he is going to get hurt. He's already hurt himself. You know, he's already had, you know, muscle cramping in the biggest matches that match with him and Sinner the uh, like last year was one of the most insane match they were Sinner was taking it to him and then Sinner got hurt and then Alcaraz was taking it to him and then Alcaraz got hurt and they both you know towards the third set were just limping they couldn't even they couldn't even walk it was unbelievable so you know what makes these players so good besides talent you know, their mental strength, their mental awareness. You know, what can we learn from the top players in the world in any sport? What can we learn from that? How can we apply that? Um, you know, what can, what can we learn from the younger players? Their, their jubilance, their excitement, their, their love for the game, their mental struggles they go through. You know, when Sabalinka double faults but I mean she when she's on nobody can beat her when any of them are on nobody can beat her I still think Sakari's going to take an, another step you know who are the next players that are gonna you know have the chance to be number one I mean why is Shuitek so good I mean sometimes I, I look at her I'm like man I, I can't believe she's number one but she's been number one for a while why is that she you know she's moving forward into the ball you know she's attacking her ground strokes are incredible. Now, she's not the biggest or the strongest or the fastest. But, you know, what is it up here? that Why is she, why is she so good? Um, but anyway, you know, the passion for tennis is what we're going to convey on this channel. The drive. You know, how, how, to, how you're going to have focus. You know, your ability to play the next point without, you know, the, the previous points mattering and just being in the present and and loving tennis and that's that's what this channel is all about and we look forward to the journey with all of you uh, tennis fans and tennis players and sports fans and sports players uh, we look forward to sharing this journey with you and, and teaching us all to be you know better humans and appreciating everyone and just being a kind individual on and off the court is important and staying healthy and getting exercise to for longevity reasons so anyway uh signing off from this video but don't be average be a tennis savage and don't have the audacity because we're going to give you tennis tenacity <laughs>